What's up guys, I'm BTC. We just got a massive amount of information from Jeff Kaplan about what Blizzard is trying to do to solve some of the issues with the roll queue system, most notably the very long queue times for DPS players. And he talks about a variety of things, moving certain characters like Roadhog into the DPS category and how they would have changed him, also different compositions. So there is a ton of stuff here, so grab a snack because it's going to take a minute to go through all this. Let's get to it. Jeff Kaplan starts by saying, In early December, we were brainstorming ways to shorten DPS queue times, and the idea was proposed to try changing the roll queue team composition to be one tank, three damage, and two support. Our matchmaking engineers did some modeling around queue times, expected behaviors, etc., and all indications pointed to an overall positive improvement to all queue times under a scenario like that. From a design perspective, we were reluctant for a number of reasons. Before implementing 222 Roll Queue, we had done experiments with the team compositions being 1 tank, 1 support, and 4 damage. The playtests under the 411 comp were terrible. The problem was the solo support. As a solo support, you felt unable to keep the rest of the team alive. Added to that, at all times, you had 5 very aggressive players prioritizing you as the target every time. As soon as the support player on one side died, the entire team would fall like a house of cards. So when the idea of trying 3-2-1 came up, we were hesitant because of our poor playtest with the 4-1-1. But we did something interesting in December, and I'm really proud of the team for sticking with it. Now because this is such a massive amount of information, I'm going to pause every now and again and just kind of throw in my two cents. So in regard to having only one support on your team, this would effectively require a complete rework of almost every support. For the simple fact that characters like Brigida or Lucio or Zenyatta just would be absolutely incapable of keeping your entire team alive. Something like a Baptiste or an Ana is going to have, or even Moira, they're going to have the healing output required. But when you look at some of the other characters who are, you know, kind of off healers, you just don't have the healing required in order to, to do that at all. So it would require massive reworks if they were to do that, which they obviously decided not to. Continuing, internally for the past two months, we've changed the game to be based on 3 2 one composition. When we queue for our playtests, we only get one tank per team for each match. We decided to live with it for December and January because we felt like the easy and natural thing for us to do is to just say, hey, this is different and here are all the problems with it and dismiss the system. But by forcing the team to try it out and live with it for so long, it challenged us to try and solve some of the problems that have surfaced. And there are a number of challenges. First, there is the issue of what players have come to call off tanks. The biggest issue centers around D.Va, Zarya, and Roadhog. The current playstyle of those tanks, if you're adhering to various metas that have existed, is to pair them with other main tanks. Obviously, if we were to change the distribution of roles from 2-2-2 to 3-2-1, it would require some balance changes, but possibly more than that. Roadhog is a great example. Is the correct thing to do for Roadhog under that design to try and make him more main tanky, or is it the correct thing to do to simply move him to the damage role and balance him as a damage character? We tried both in our months of testing. If you were to come and play Roadhog today with us in our 3 2 1 environment, he is moved to the tank from the tank to the damage category and he only has 400 health. Take a breather only heals and does not do the damage reduction, and there was a bunch of DPS changes to his scrap gun. Now, don't freak out, we're not doing this for 2 2 2. I am only sharing the design experiment that's going on here. Maybe a better direction for Roadhog under 322 is some sort of team damage reduction ability. How do you tank what is essentially an off tank and make him a main tank? This is what we would have to explore with any of these tank changes. Since the tank roster is already one of the more limited character selection, we're obviously not crazy about removing choice from tank players. And if our stated goal is to improve queue times, did going to one tank actually remove a bunch of otherwise tank players from the queue? Or were some of these tank players actually damage players who wanted a faster queue time, so they picked Roadhog? Obviously complicated questions, 
and it is even more complicated to be confident in an answer. Pausing for a second, I've talked about what they could do to change Roadhog to make him into an actual tank. One of the possibilities was having some sort of area effect resistance. The thing is, in the lore, Roadhog is a bodyguard. He's Junkrat's bodyguard. And there are different things that you could do to make him into an actual tank that still fits within that role. You could have some sort of ability that grants damage resistance to a teammate. Or you could have some sort of a lifelink ability. I even made this lifelink ability into one of my hero concepts, one of my favorite ones, which is called Brute. And how it works is you just connect with one of your teammates and essentially the tank will take a portion of whatever damage the other teammate is taking. So if he takes 100 damage, then that character would actually get 70 and Roadhog would end up taking 30, or in my case it was Brute. But the point still stands. There are definitely things that you can do to Roadhog to make him fully into a tank without having to resort to just giving him a barrier like what happens a lot of times. Back to Jeff Kaplan, the other fear around a 3-2-1 comp is the importance it places on the tank player. In our playtesting, this has manifested itself in two notable ways. Some players feel a lot of pressure to choose the correct tank if there's only one tank. The team has a very strong opinion about who that tank should be. Another fear around this issue is that metas will be even more limited as players tend to take the path of least resistance towards their hero choices. If Reinhardt is deemed meta, do we only see Rein from now on? Are we all mad at our tank player if they play the hamster? Some tank players felt a tremendous anxiety about their performance in the match. They felt like being the lone tank put a lot of pressure on them, and if they died, it was a really big deal. Some of our tank and support players who would occasionally play tank stopped playing tank during 3-2-1 and only gravitated towards support because they felt intimidated to be the main tank and have so much focus on their play. Conversely, there are a number of main tank players on the team who actually enjoy the added spotlight. Traditionally, in video games, there are different personas that are attracted to different roles in games tank, support, damage, etc. We saw this in World of Warcraft, and we see it in Overwatch. While there are stereotypes, and you have to be really careful assuming too much here, there are many tank players who love being the lone tank, and carry the team to glory. Watching this play out in our weird internal experiment has been fascinating. This is very similar to what you would have with what I was talking about earlier in the support players, when you only have the one lone support. Having this sort of a change, where you only have one tank, would necessarily require some massive reworks to all of the characters in the tank category. And I'm not just talking about like Roadhog getting the different abilities and stuff. You would have to necessarily massively increase their survivability. Pretty much every tank would have to have either a massive health pool or a pretty good amount of armor in order to be the lone tank and still be effective. Continuing, for our support players, they have given mixed feelings on the experiment as well. On the negative side, people feel bad when the lone tank dies. On the positive side, many support mains have commented that they feel like they have more freedom to focus on other players and not to just, quote, try to keep the big bags of hit points alive all match, end quote. In general, these matches are more chaotic, and he says he'll touch on that later, but they feel more FPS-y. The result is good or bad depending on the type of player you are. For some of our support players, this makes matches more exciting. Everyone is taking a lot more damage under 3-2-1. For some support players, the chaos causes negative anxiety and they prefer to just heal the tanks. The damage experience has been overall positive. For one, for those of us, like Jeff Kaplan, he usually cues on all three roles. We're often pleasantly surprised to actually get to play damage. Also, many on the team have cited that with three damage dealers, they feel far less pressure than they do on the current live game with only two damage. The compositions have been very interesting. For example, you can have a two sniper comp, Widow and Hanzo, and have a flanker, Genji or Tracer. It's really opened up the game. If you're evaluating pluses and minuses, it adds to the chaos, makes the game play more like a traditional FPS, which I've talked about recently where 
some of the devs were concerned that the game has been moving away from FPS. And he says, you know, there's less barriers, less damage mitigation going on, but it also kind of distracts from the team play. And continuing, he says, speaking of team play, one of our testers who did not like the experiment made a comment that he felt like 321 distracted from team play too much. I found this fascinating because in 2013, 2014, every decision we made was to embrace, encourage, or even force team play at all costs. We put so much effort into putting the focus on team victory defeat rather than individual performance. But in 2020, I feel like the overemphasis on team play, while great for the hyper competitive players in situations such as the Overwatch League, causes a lot of psychological pressure for your average player just looking to blow off steam in a video game. I guess what I'm saying is that in 2020, feeling like you can deviate from team play a little bit in Overwatch and still have some success feels like a good thing. Not a bad thing to me. The other analogy I've used, and I know you all hate my sports analogies, he says, is that Overwatch in its current evolved form feels like a football game to me, where every match is fourth down and the goal line. The amount of team synergy and execution required to pull off a victory is exciting, but also a little intense. There is something nice about a more loose, skirmishy version of the game, but again, it's all opinion and perspective. Not everyone on my team agrees with me, and that's a good thing. And I need to chime in here. One of the things that I've said about Overwatch, and I've heard it from other people since pretty much the game has been released, is that it takes six players to win the match, and only one to lose it. And that just means that you have to always be working as a full team. And if one person is goofing off, if one person isn't cooperating, if they're going and flanking and trying to be Rambo and do their own thing, or if they're just, you know, not cooperating with the team or they're picking characters that just don't synergize with the rest of the team, you know, all that sort of stuff, or even just blatantly throwing, then it becomes exponentially more difficult to win the match because your individual performance doesn't do enough to really carry the game and this is particularly true when the barriers were really strong you could play as a widow or a hanzo or something or soldier or mccree whoever right and you could have some of the best accuracy in the entire world but if the enemy team is just bunkered down behind a whole bunch of barriers, then there really isn't a whole lot that you can do. Like, yes, you can switch to things, but ultimately it's going to take a team effort in order to kind of dislodge the defenders. And if your team isn't cooperating enough, then you're not going to be able to win. And I think that is definitely one of the problems. In CSGO, you can have several people on your team who are just not pulling their weight at all. But if you have that one dude who is sitting with an op on one of the, the sites, then he can just win you the match, right? Like, you can have that one player who just kind of one-taps the enemies with the AK, and you're going to end up winning because you don't have to worry about barriers. You don't have to worry about healing and resing and all this other stuff. And yes, I realize that they're two you know, very different games, but again, individual skill is so much more important in a game like CSGO than it is in Overwatch. And the fact that Jeff Kaplan is admitting this and that he is kind of open to moving towards the individual skill as opposed to, you know, everybody on your team having absolutely having to work together, I think that's definitely a good thing for the game. Continuing on, we're almost done, hang in there. He says, the other odd thing about testing is that when we started, everyone treated it like it was one of Jeff's crazy experiments. And it was super different, challenging, and possibly a stupid idea. I tried to calm people down by reminding them that most of the matches in Overwatch history since launch up until the release of Roll Queue were actually played with one tank or less. After a few of the early playtests in December, I remember one developer giving feedback that the game felt like old school Overwatch like when we first launched. And I tried to point out that the reason they felt that way is because we used to play this game the way that way all the time. It shouldn't be that surprising or different. Let's all remember the surprising thing back then was actually having two tanks. And Jeff Kaplan is absolutely on the money here. One of the single most frustrating things 
that would happen when you queue up for a competitive match, you get in game and suddenly you have four people insta-lock DPS. And now you're in a situation like, okay, well, normally you play DPS, so are you just gonna do it again and not have, you know, enough tanks and healers? Or even if you pick a tank, you're at best gonna have one healer. So, or if you pick a healer, you're gonna have at best one tank. It, it was just not a very good situation. And now at least with the 3-2-1 with the one tank, you're still guaranteed to have two support and one tank. But he continues and says, So it's been a really interesting and fun experiment. We're not really confident that it is the correct thing to do for the game. It solves a lot of problems, but it also introduces a lot of problems, like most things in the world of game design. I am really proud of the Overwatch team for experimenting with it for the past two months. We're really conflicted on it, so it was cool to see someone bring it up, that idea, on the forums. We'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. We've also been brainstorming if there's a way to bring the experiment to the community somehow, either through the PTR or the live game somehow. We don't want people to freak out though. Usually when stuff hits the PTR, we intend for it to go live or some version of it, but this is much more of an early experiment more than anything else. While I was reading this, and some of you guys may have already been thinking about this and possibly putting it in the comment section below already, is why don't you just increase it to seven players? Why not just have two tanks, three DPS, and two support? And wouldn't that solve a lot of the issues as well? Well, as it turns out, a lot of other people on the forums also said this, and Jeff Kaplan responded to it, and he said, exceeding 12 players per match would cause significant technical challenges. We're highly optimized towards 12 right now. Experimenting with less than 12 is more realistic. It's not something we cannot do. It's the cost would be extremely high. Overall, this was really interesting and it's neat to see what kind of stuff that they're working on behind the scenes. I don't really know if changing the roll queue into a 3-2-1 is going to really solve all of these issues. And I do share some of the same concerns, but ultimately I think what they're trying to do is more treat the symptom than the actual problem itself. Because when people are playing FPS, and that's what Overwatch is supposed to be, that's what they're trying to move it back being more towards, is an FPS. And when people play an FPS, they want to pew 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 pew. They want to get those big fancy eliminations and the play of the games and, and the streaks and all that sort of stuff. They want that sort of stuff. And I don't think that playing tank and support is nearly as rewarding for the majority of the player base that are trying to play in FPS. Like, they don't want to have to try to constantly look at their teammates and try to heal them and stuff. They would much rather look at the enemy and pew pew pew, right? And the same thing with the tanks. Do you want to actually attack the enemy, or do you just kind of want to stand there and hold right click with a barrier up so that the rest of your team can do that? Now, obviously, there are going to be different kinds of players who enjoy these different functions, but Again, the vast majority of players in an FPS want that pew pew pew. So I think fundamentally Blizzard needs to kind of re-examine how they are having the healing and the tanking in this game. And I think there needs to be a shift away from the kind of more defensive aspects of it towards more aggressive and making it so that even the tanks and even the healers need to be focused on the enemy, right? Like, you're still going to have those situations where you have to have the Ana healing your teammate, right? Like, it's, you're just not gonna get around that. But I think that making everything more FPS-like and, and putting more emphasis on the pew 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 would make people want to play the tanks and the supports more. And I think ultimately that is going to be the biggest way to solve the problem with the long queue times because if you make the other classes interesting, then not everyone is just gonna wanna insta-lock into DPS. So let me ask you guys, what would you like to see in some of these changes? Do you think the 3-2-1 could work with only the one tank? Or what Jeff Kaplan said after where he said that they can't really go beyond the 12 players, but they could reduce it 
and that might be a possibility. Would you rather see something like five-man teams, where you have one tank, two DPS, and two supports? Or would you prefer to have only four-man teams, where it's kind of more like what we have with the archives, right? So you have one healer, one tank, and two DPS. Or would you like to see something completely different? And what are your other thoughts on the entire system? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell to get notified. You can get some cool gear, join my Discord server, or follow me on social media with the links down in the description below. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters, and remember, always, always blame the controller, because it's never your fault.